Hey readers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire Books, and today I want to do a rundown of the books that I read in April. I read eight books in April, and we're just going to go through them in order, since that seems easy enough, and I put everything in the Goodreads. So my uh, the first one I read was uh, The Library Book by Susan Orlean, and this is a book that is the history of a fire in a library in California that is spliced in with the history of the library in general, with the life of the man who may have set the library on fire, but nobody's totally sure. And then just, you know, it's a, it's a book about people who love books and are very sad when bad things happen to them. I ended up giving the book three stars. It was okay. I felt that in parts it dragged on a little too long and that some of the anecdotes just weren't really interesting enough to be included. So the book was fine. I learned some interesting stuff from it, but there were also parts that just really dragged for me. So if you really, really want to read about a library, it's fine but it, it was not a life changer nonfiction. So if you felt meh about it, I would just try something else. The next book I read was called Girl A. It's by Abigail Dean. And this is a book that is about a woman who has survived abuse. Her, her parents were horrible parents who just treated their children terribly. The kids have all become very traumatized and she is left with dealing with her mother's estate after her mom dies in prison. And then she is required to go and get permission from the other siblings to do what she wants to do with the estate. So the book was really, really interesting. Uh, most of the book was a really morbidly exciting read. Like, you know, nobody really wants to have children suffer. But because you're reading about these adult survivors, it was really, really interesting to see where they had gone, what the treatment had done to them. And maybe, you know, and throughout the book, you learn some family secrets that are horrifying, but you definitely keep reading. That said, there was a little bit of a twist ending that I did not like, and I won't give it away, but I thought it was just kind of whatever. Like I'd read this book, there was no reason to expect that twist really. And I just didn't like it. So most of the book was really, really good. Actually, I might've given it four stars, except for one of the twists I thought was stupid. But that happens to me a lot with thrillers, so, you know, your mileage may vary. The next book I read was The Prophets by Robert Jones. So this book is set on a plantation, and there are two slaves, Samuel and Isaiah, who are really, really in love with each other and whose relationship is accepted by their community. However, there is a preacher who decides that to raise his own power in the community and with the owner of the slaves, he decides to try to sell these guys out and really point to what they are doing in their relationship as sinful. And it, unfortunately, it starts to work. And then drama ensues from there. So this, this book was really interesting. There was some great writing. There were multiple very interesting characters, which I really appreciated because I thought this book would mostly focus on the two men at the center of it. But actually, there's a lot of other people who are brought in and you could see a lot of their thought processes and what's going on with them, which I thought was really cool. However, in a lot of ways, I thought there were so many people that the plot never went as deep as I wanted it to go. There are people whose thoughts and motivations kind of flash across the page, but I would have liked to linger with them a bit longer and I did not get to. And I also thought that the book was maybe a little bit too florid. Um, Jones likes very, very pretty writing. And generally I do too, but sometimes the writing was so pretty and so overdone maybe that it distracted from the rawness and the emotion of the moments that were being depicted in the story. At least for me, that's a, that's a matter of personal taste. I also appreciated one of the things that the book did, which was try to give the slave characters an identity and an origin that is beyond being in America and being on a plantation. And I completely appreciate that choice. However, there are also some chapters that are from the point of view of us, sort of like the ancestors. And occasionally it kind of came in in ways that didn't feel totally smoothly implemented, at least not for me. That said, beautiful book, really nice love story. I mean, I'm not gonna tell you how it ends, but um, there are moments of incredible beauty in a brutal book. 
So this next book I read is the only five star read that I had in the month of April it is wonderful. It's called The Sum of Us, What Racism Costs Everyone and How We Can Prosper Together. And it is by Heather McGee. Heather McGee is so smart. And so just, oh man, I love it when writing takes these huge concepts and makes them seem really manageable. And that is something that Heather McGee is amazing at. She works for this research company that makes policy recommendations for hopefully our lawmakers to consider when they're writing bills and thinking about how to help people who are having problems in America. And she knows everything about everything. She's great. And she can really bring information together in ways that are informative, concise, and that really make her point so, 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 so well. I was very enthusiastic about this book. So the general thesis of this book is that policies, even ones that we don't necessarily associate with racism in the United States, in fact, are racist, and that our racist attitudes end up hurting everybody, not just marginalized people. She starts with the public pool crisis in the United States where we used to have beautiful public pools all throughout the South. And when integration happened and it became very clear that white people were going to be forced to integrate with black swimmers at public pools, a lot of local governments chose to either privatize pools or to fill the pools in because they just couldn't bear to have something nice that they had to share with people they didn't like. And so this entire really cool public works project got literally buried, destroyed, because people were racist and selfish. And this theme continues across a number of other topics, including some prime, subprime mortgages, which were disproportionately marketed to people of color, including people of color with great credit, but it also ended up hurting our entire economy and issues like organization of unions, because rather than having workers all work together for the common good of the worker, companies have found that it's possible to basically create strata among their workers partially based on race. And this is something that they can do to keep workers from collective bargaining for the collective. And it was interesting to read about this stuff. It was depressing, but McGee's overall argument is really, really strong. You will learn a lot about United States history and public policy. And I found this book to be perspective changing, which is something that I absolutely love in the books that I read. Highly recommend The Sum of Us by Heather McGee. The next book I read was Margaret George's The Confessions of Young Nero. Um, I love historical fiction about ancient Rome. I wanted to read this book about Nero. It was okay. It was pretty entertaining, but it also pretty closely followed kind of established lore about Nero. It tried to present him in a more sympathetic light, but it also still trashed his mom, Agrippina, which is something that I personally have a problem with. And I just thought the book didn't go deep enough into the real challenges and miseries of being from the family that Nero was from and being in the job that he had. So it was okay, but it didn't hit the deep resonant notes that I really like my historical fiction to hit, especially when it's about these people from this period in history. The next book I read was Infinite Country by Patricia Engel. So this book is about a girl who has been imprisoned for committing a crime, but you can decide for yourself whether you think she deserved to go once you find out what the crime is. And um, she is part of a family that is split because her mother and siblings live in the United States. She lives with her father and her ailing grandmother in Colombia. And it's about the difficulties of having a family that's split apart by country borderlines, it's about the plight of people who are fleeing from a war-torn country, but then they come to a country that doesn't necessarily welcome them. And it's about family bonds over time, despite people's faults and challenges. Overall, it was a really, really lovely story. I was very, very engaged with the book for the vast majority of it. I think the ending was maybe a little bit, there's like a big reveal at the end and a really kind of quick ending that maybe ends a little too fast. So I spent most of the book being really, really engaged, cruising along, really loving the writing. And then the ending was kind of like, it's like when the plane lands too hard. So it was mostly really good, but it wasn't a perfect book for me. It was still really excellent. I would recommend that other people read it. My second to last book of April was by Declan Walsh and it is called The Nine Lives of Pakistan. So this is something that Walsh wrote after he was deported from Pakistan after working there for almost 10 years as a journalist. He clearly had made a life in that country and had really fallen in love with it. But what he's writing about is a lot of the challenges in Pakistan. So, you know, I remember when Benazir Bhutto was assassinated. I 
have vague awareness of India and Pakistan and their conflicts, but I've never really made enough effort to understand Pakistan as a country. And I thought this book was an interesting start because basically the nine lives are different people that Walsh covered while he was there and who piqued his interest. And there is so much interesting cultural conflict going on there between rich and poor, uh, between extremist and non-extremist, between people who the government seems to be serving well and people who is really not. And there's also a lot of conflict between the military, which is very powerful in Pakistan, and the elected officials who are elected by the public, but who are also kind of scammy. Like there's a lot of craziness going on in the electoral system there. So I really felt like this book gave me a lot of insight. And I think the insights that I got out of it that were the most important were that people who really don't like each other are still very connected and have to find ways to work together within Pakistan. I thought it was really interesting. So you have mortal enemies who occasionally have to side with each other or who know each other or whose families go way back. And it's just this sort of strangely incestuous political system over there that, you know, that is full of people who are trying to have good lives themselves and also hopefully to advance their nation. The other thing that was sort of shocking to me is just how precarious a lot of these people's lives were. Um, he does cover Benazir Bhutto in the book, but she's not the only person who is killed or assassinated. And it was really shocking how precarious so many lives are over there. And also how prevalent Islamic extremism is in various parts of Pakistan. So Walsh presented these interesting contrasting images of parties where rich people drink all night and dance and wear risque clothing. And then there are people who would find all that extremely offensive and who have a vision for a much more conservative and Islamic law centered Pakistan. So really interesting read. I learned a lot from it. Highly recommend just to get a cool sense of a country from someone who spent so much time there. And my last book of April was The Bad Muslim Discount by Sayed Masood. So this was a really interesting book. Uh, the cover makes it look kind of young and fluffy, but it was actually a pretty intense book and had a lot of intense themes in it. The story centers around two different Muslim people who moved from their home countries to the United States. So there's a man who's moved from Pakistan and a woman who has moved from Iraq. And not only do they have a lot of individual family drama, but their lives intertwine in various ways. And the book was really interesting because it kind of showed the pressure of living in American society, but also caring about your Muslim religion. It's not always accepted very kindly here. And, you know, there were so many interesting conflicts of identity to explore that I really found the book moving and highly worth reading. The story is also pretty good. There's some definite drama going on in it that'll also keep you going. The only criticism I would have of the book is, I mean, I'm an atheist, I get it, but both of the main characters in this book were pretty not religious or who were, or were really, really questioning Islam in a lot of key ways. Meanwhile, people who are particularly religious were presented as also particularly bad, difficult, or unaccepting in this book. And I'm definitely willing to guess that this is true to the author's experience. However, I also wonder whether it's totally fair. So if you're sensitive to books that are hard on religious people, then this one might not be for you. I found it very entertaining and I feel like I learned a lot from it, even though it was a pretty wild fictional tale. So those are the books that I read in April. I feel like it was a pretty good month of reading. If you read anything particularly awesome last month, I'm definitely interested in hearing about it. So let me know and happy reading everybody.